Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking about buffers and uh, voltage followers today a little bit more. Uh, and the reason we're going to is because uh, Miguel asked on the video request. This is one of the video requests here. Uh, it didn't have any votes, but it did kind of fit in with the week, so I thought it would be a good one to grab. Um, it is kind of me deciding who to do it ultimately, but if you do remember, if you go into video request here, you can see uh, all of the ones you can actually sort by vote, you can sort by viewed, sort by if they're uh, answered. So, oh, that's not vote, sorry. There we go. Other direction. There we go. Top question is from me. And uh, we'll get to this stuff, so don't worry about that. Anyways, we're going to be talking about voltage uh, followers and buffers and why the heck do they matter. So, uh, we got our trusty little board here again. Hopefully it went okay last time. Uh, oh, one more time there. Okay. Um, so let's talk about voltage buffers. Why does this stuff matter at all? Um, hopefully, you know, I was thinking about more about the videos and how, how I was drawing stuff yesterday. And, um, you know, I was drawing a voltage source like this, right? You know, like, a, boy, that, I don't like how it crosses that. But anyways, um, so I was drawing it like this, where this is ground. And this is the positive output terminal. You could also think of it as a battery, right? So another way to draw this is you sometimes see this drawn as a battery, right? That's another symbol. Or if we wanted to <laughs> draw it for Duracell, we could draw like this, right? And then this is the flat side of the bottom battery. And then this is the top side. This is the positive side of the battery. And, uh, and basically current flows out of here. Um, so hopefully that nomenclature and that that not the nomenclature but the way that we're we're drawing it kind of makes sense here, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see that more going forwards as well. But um, I had a different pen here as well. There we go. Okay, so why does it matter that we have a voltage or a buffer in a circuit? A good example here would be with a resistor and a power source like we were just showing. So let's draw a, a voltage uh, voltage supply here. A slightly different thing. Looks a little bit more scripted. Okay, so we've got a, a voltage supply. Let's call it 5 volts. Then let's say there's some kind of resistance on the output because even batteries have this kind of thing. They have resistance if you're looking if you're looking at it there's you know it's a voltage supply but actually this resistor here there's some kind of resistance basically ends up current limiting how much this could output you know if this is a 5 volt uh, if this is a 5 volt supply and then you s you had this connected to ground right uh, if this was connected directly to ground then it would be able to output infinite current well that's not really the case um, if you have a 5 volt supply and you short it it's going to stop outputting current at some point, right? So it might be an amp, it might be 5 amps. Really, that depends on your supply. And so if we wanted to model that, we could, right? So we could say uh, there's an output impedance here, right? Often impedance is what you refer to. But you could also think of it as a, as a resistor. Um, impedance is usually used for uh, more complex terms. But um, the output impedance there is actually what's limiting. That's how we can model it in order to say, well, there's some limit on how much current this thing can output. So if we say this resistor here is a thousand ohms or one kilo ohms, one thousand ohms, you know the symbolic notation there, one thousand ohms, right? Then that means that the amount of total current that would be possible to come out of here is five milliamps, right? And that's great, right? That there are some batteries and voltage supplies where they don't have the capability of outputting more. They they have a five five volt um, output, but they can only output 5 milliamps, right? And so that's okay in some situations. But say you have now, you're trying to output it, and you have a load, which is 1 amp, or 1 ohm rather, and you are expecting, right? So, so you ignore this middle part here, and you say, okay, there's a 5 volt supply, and there's one ohm here, I would expect five amps, right? But that's not the case. That's not actually what's happening here. And that's because it has this source 
source impedance here. So basically, there's some kind of internal mechanism, which we could talk about in, in later dates, but basically there's an internal mechanism which is limiting how much current the entire thing can output. Because really this is, you know, this is just a theoretical model, right? This actually, this, it's actually all one thing here. And why isn't that drawing now? Come on, there you go. All right, so this is all inside the box, right? It can only output though. It can output five volts, but it can only do five milliamps, right? So if, if we expected to put one amp through, or five amps through a one ohm resistor, right? Because it's it looks like five volts right here. Well, that's not really the case. Okay, so let's talk about that. So that that's what we expect. That's not really possible. So we're back we're back here now, and we know. Okay, there we get pencil, <laughs> and uh, there we go. I like that drawing tool. Okay, so. Now, how could we change this situation, right? Really, the problem is that we have what amounted to <coughs> a, a resistive divider, right? We had the 1,000 ohm, right? And then we had the 1 ohm load. 1 ohm. Okay. Over here, we had a 5 volt supply. Okay, so how could we actually then take 5 volts, right? At this point right here, we have 5 volts, and we actually want to output more current into this load. Well, what we do is we put a buffer in line here. And a buffer, let me fill that in. <laughs> a buffer, um, it looks like a theoretical device, right? Um, in this case, it's just a triangle, right? And uh, in more, in more, uh, circuit simulations it, you know you actually talk more about the the uh, internals of it and the, the internal characteristics which we can talk about in a second here but ultimately what happens is you're now splitting your circuit in two right so you have five volts here and it looks like your thousand ohms can still output f you know upwards of five milliamps but it doesn't need to now because this point right here this point right here has effectively not actually infinite impedance right so now you don't have to put out five milliamps right it's no longer five milliamps it's something much smaller it could be five microamps it could be five nanoamps five nanoamps and that's what ultimately is the benefit here the current that you can supply from a very uh, high high impe high output impedance source such as this it no longer matters because basically this this buffer now says okay you have I have a very high impedance input right I look like a a very light load right and I know these terms are kind of confusing because load is ugh, what does that mean right but it looks like it's not very hard to drive current into this thing but then on the output here this can actually now this basically takes over the output right so it says my input is very easy to to take to 5 volts, right? That's now at 5 volts, and now I can output some higher amount of current and some and the exact same voltage. And that right there is basically the benefit of a of a voltage follower or a buffer. Right? Now let's talk about it a little bit more practically. And pen. Okay. Um so now we can, let's just ignore that source impedance like we drew it before, right? We know this is outputting 5 volts now, right? This is going into a buffer. We know that there's some amount of limiting here, but we'll just ignore it. Now we're going to start drawing it like it actually is in an op-amp, right? So there's a positive terminal and a negative feedback. And this is grounded. And then we're going to drive this into some kind of 1 ohm load, right? Okay, so now this is at 5 volts. This is at 5 volts, right? Because uh, the that's basically what a buffer is there for, is to maintain the voltage from the, its input to its output. But now it can drive some amount of current, right? How much, though? Well, we really don't know that yet. What this ultimately depends on is right here. How much current the supplies can output. Right, so you might have, maybe you have a 10 volt rail, right? You have a 10 volt supply that's going into this buffer, 
but really what it ultimately comes down to is actually what this 10 volt supply is. So if this 10 volt supply can supply 10 volts at 100 amps, well, and assuming everything goes right, then yeah, you're gonna be able to perfectly supply your five amps, right? Five volts in, five volts out, and then it's going to also supply five amps as this resistor wants it to, right? I say wants to, like an anthropomorphic resistor, right? But um, basically, because of the resistance here, because of the load and the source, or the load impedance, it basically, you know, let's talk about Ohm's law, right? Ugh, equals, come on, equals I. Oh, man, we're gonna we're gonna try that again. V <laughs> equals I times R. Okay. So we know this, this is five. We know this, this is one. And we know then that if we divide five by one, this is going to also be five amps. That's where we came up with that five amp number. So now, because we have a higher supply current, right, in this buffer, this buffer is now able to supply, or the, the rails on this buffer are able to supply up to 100 amps. We can do five amps, we can, and we can do five or sorry, five volts, and we can do it at five amps. And basically, those two things right there are why you want to use a buffer because, you know, we draw it theoretically just showing a triangle here. But what we're really doing is we're injecting another power supply. That's really the key point of a buffer. Um, you're using, you know, it's not like there's free energy coming into it, but basically you're isolating your, your weak small supply over here and then you're using some external supply and you're controlling it to look like whatever this small weak supply looks like. So in this case, five volts. And then you're using the extra current, right? So we're saying, okay, we want it to be five volts and it can do up to upwards of 100 amps. So really, those, those two things together are really why you want to use a buffer. Now, if we look at, um, you know, this is all in the context of a uh, the current supply circuit that we talked about in the current fan module. So if we look at how, how we did the, uh, the current, at least how we showed the, the current fan driver module so far, um, we did something similar actually. So what we did is we had a rail, I think it was five volts or so, we had two resistors, and then ground, and basically these are the same value. And basically this is a voltage, perfect voltage divider, so this is about two and a half volts in this case. And then we put it into a buffer. And then we drove a FET. Hey, that's a mess. Okay, so we were driving a FET, and I'm not sure I got all the, the details right. But the key here, the key here is that this is 2.5 volts. Um, if you just tried to drive this FET to 2.5 volts, right, and you were trying to do it without this in the way, basically this would not be able to supply enough current. So instead we have rails on these op amps, and basically then the current here is what drives. So it's from the voltage rail on the buffer that actually then goes and drives the, um, the gate of this FET. Basically, and that's the reason we want to isolate this relatively low impedance point here from this higher impedance, from this point over here. Um, and I'm not sure if I got everything right about this circuit, um, but you know, basically, when you do have some kind of weak source impedance here, right? So in this case, we, you know, we might be doing this with 1k, right? 1k. Well, it's the same kind of situation that we were showing before, right? Five volts here. You have now you have 2k total source impedance, right? But even 1k here, that means we can only supply 5 milliamps total. Well, if we need more than 5 milliamps, we need to put some kind of intermediary here. So that's really why we're doing that for the current uh, and fan driver module. So uh, our second sketch planation, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is useful. Hopefully I didn't confuse anyone anymore. If you have any questions, uh, I will be placing this video in with the current fan driver module videos, and uh, you can Ask questions there. Thanks for watching.